Welcome back to this week's Tonga Island show. And this week we will have another content of E.M. Tongi plus E.M. Tongi's family roots from the island kingdom of Tonga with 100,000 people who has qualified for the World Cup in 2023 here, starting in September in France. As we had talked about, we wanted to make sure that you voted last week to see if, um, you know, the rugby union uh, in Tonga would allow um, E.M. Tong to, rep to sing the national anthem for them, but that was just the voting, and the result is 91% of you voted said yes, definitely. And I'm not sure who the, the rest of the people that voted no, um, doesn't matter. But, you know, as we always hear from E.M. Tong himself, who always says, you know what, my father always said, my music is not for everybody. That's right, and you know, uh, I'm, I'm thank you again for those of you who voted. And in fact, we have a new voting thing for this uh, this season. Uh, yeah, uh, that would be for Philippe Manu also, in case uh, EM can doesn't have time. But we'll talk about that later. Let's let's talk about um, the national anthem and break down the national anthem because the national anthem was so beautiful that I, I just wanted to break it down for you guys. But this week it has been a lot of drama about the national anthem, especially out there in Eden Park in New Zealand. Sorry, not e Eden <laughs> Eden Park. I think that's how I pronounce it. Um, I guess uh, because of the game between the national anthem. Uh, between um, Vietnam and also the uh, American women's uh, soccer, national soccer team. So that Eden Park then uh, comes to mind because of uh, October 7th when E.M. Tongi's uh, concert at the, the, Eden, um, the Eden Music Festival uh, in New Zealand on October 7th. So, um, you know, uh, that's why I, when I saw that, I was like, interesting. Yeah, so uh, the national anthem is always a picky subject. And... Um, you know, we'll talk about how how beautiful, how beautiful E.M. Tongi sang that song. I mean, that national anthem, you know, like I said, he sent chills, goosebumps, chicken skin, whatever you call it. But it was a special, special, beautiful rendition, as, as some of you heartfelt, as some of you have mentioned on your comment on the last uh, episode. So... You know, I, I, I've heard of so many different versions, and I guess the one I will always remember was back in um, when Whitney Houston sang it, you know. I think it was Super Bowl 1991. Of course, then she had an orchestra with her, you know, uh, accompanying her. And, uh, but this, this was special because it was different. It, it was E.M. Tongi against <laughs> nature, really. Literally, and so I've broken down here for you guys, so you can just look at at what he had to deal with, and still came out singing that amazingly, you know. So here, like, I've colored the words here. So when you see the orange colors here, like dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, all the way down to perilous. Throughout that whole time, there's a jet flying overhead, and you can hear it with the headphone. And, and the amazing thing about it is that I've never heard a whole stadium where you can literally hear a pin drop. And, and all you heard was this jet flying overhead, you know? And so the first time you hear anything coming out of that is, is on the word fight. I've marked it red because and every time you see mar red marking, I wrote down what somebody whistled, you know? And then, but... Everyone was listening and paying attention, you know, and as you went through the line or the ramparts we watched, you know, on that watch, he kind of waved his voice. I, I mean, he did like a, uh, he, yeah, he, he kind of like, um, yeah, ornament, I guess you could call it, you know, or riff a little bit. And we're so gallantly streaming. And right after that, you could hear... You know, it sounded like uh, someone from the islands, uh, one of those screams, you know. <laughs> so I put down that. And then, and the rock is, now this is a different line. I mean, this whole line here, I mean, if E.M. Tongi didn't have, if his eyes, if he couldn't read the board, I'm sure he would have forgotten his lines. But basically the text or the lyrics was on the board, you know. So, you know, and the rocket's red glare and the bombs bursting in air. I mean, machine gun first and the rocket's red glare, you know, and then the bombs, really, fireworks. I mean, literally bombs bursting in the air. And it's almost like you couldn't hear E.M., but he kept singing. 
I mean, these are the distractions that was going on while he was singing. And normally you never see anybody singing a cappella, like with no accompaniment. Either they're using an instrument, one instrument, like the last Super Bowl, you know, he had a guitar on and, um, you know, people have a piano. Like most of the time we hear like uh, all this, this, these national anthems, they always have like an orchestra, a band or something, especially on, on, on the Super Bowls, you know, but here just by himself and it was so beautiful you know and so when you get down to the flag was still there on that line gave proof through the night that our flag was still there the crowd with the heart they loved it when he got there you know and then you could hear them there all oh say does the star spangled banner yet wave and when he did the wave he kind of made it you know like riffing a little bit with the wave and the crowd went crazy and they were whistling you know so as he went on to the whole song, he slowed this down, literally slowed the whole song down. Or the land of the free, where you had fireworks, the crowd, the whistling, and the home. And he held the note. This is not a normal place where you hold the, the note, but he held it like home. He, I put down a five on it, you know. He held it for like five counts. And then he went on off the, and he held it for seven. I mean, the guy has lungs. And when he held the brave, he, he held it for nine braves. And the people loved it at the end, really. And I wrote this out so you can, when you listen to him sing it, you will actually follow the, what I've written there. It's amazing. Plus, on the last line, home of the brave, actually... The bottom of the line was another jet, you know, throughout the whole time, it was a jet. Yeah. Uh, like from, and the home of the brave, uh, you know, it was flying under. And so at the end, when he was singing, somebody standing next to the camera was saying, where are the jets? Where are the jets? But I, I believe that they, the jets only happen when it's during the Super Bowls, you know, when they fly like three or four jets overhead. But I, they didn't do that here, so, you know. But anyway, I thought it was really amazing. So here it is. You guys follow along and have fun. We have you to be right if you are able as we prepare for the performance of our national anthem. And performing from the Federal Way Washington Regiment as you recently won ABC's American Idol. Ian W. <laughs> Really, I mean, you know, from now on, I, I, when I when I listen to uh, national anthems, I will always compare them to to Ian because 
of uh, what EM did with, without even like, you know, an orchestra or anything or even uh, his guitar. I mean, did you see that? He didn't even have his guitar. He just sang it, you know, and uh, I think maybe that's one of the reasons why he's forgot his hat because he's probably standing there going, um, you know, where's my guitar? <laughs> but the, the, the nicest thing that I can see here is the growth of EM. EM really grew during uh, American Idol and then now because I remember that episode he kind of didn't feel good about singing you know because he didn't have his guitar and all that you know uh, but here he is because he's been touring he's been singing he's been um, he's getting the experience he needed and um, it's wonderful to see the growth and I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of him and what he's doing and um, in fact let's go on to what we were uh, thinking of doing ourselves yeah, because we, we wanted to make sure that we could vote also for, for Felipe Manu. As, as you can see, he, this guy is just amazing. He has an amazing voice. He lives out here in Europe. And uh, this is not a competition between Iem and, 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 and Felipe Manu, because I'm sure both of them would be asked to sing if it's possible. And anyway, I mean, Felipe Manu is uh, roots of come all the way down from uh, just like Iem you know, um, born away from the islands, and, and then, you know, but they are, their, their roots uh, come from the island of Tonga. So, you know, we like that, you know. Uh, he's from New Zealand, and so um, singing out here in Europe as an opera singer, um, we did a video of him, and, and um, Iem Tong is singing the same Tong and song, and um, we didn't, we just wanted to show everybody, so we turned you guys on to Felipe Manu, you know, so I hope you guys can, um, um, you know, go to the community page and vote yes or vote no. Um, but it's it's not a competition. It's just to see how many of you would be happy to have them out here to represent them during the World Cup, you know? So, um, you know, of course, both of these singers can sing for different... Uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, Felipe Manu can actually also sing for New Zealand. And just like somebody suggested that um, EM can sing for, for Samoa. And why not, you know? I mean, you know, uh, from his Samoan background and his Irish background. I mean, Tonga in, in, in the World Cup, the first game that Tonga plays against is, is uh, world number one ranked team, Ireland. So, you know, there it is. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, go and click on, on the video if you wanted to hear, um, if you wanted to hear um, Felipe Manu sing. But if not, here's a, here's a little small uh, snippet of, of, of what he's, he's capable of doing. Let's listen in. I have searched everywhere. All of Tonga knows I have looked. Yeah, and so uh, there it is, just a little snippet of it. There's a link below and you can go and click on it and, and see the video that we did with E.M. Tongi. It's a beautiful uh, comparison of, the, of these wonderful songs that both of them sings in Tongan with the text translated. But what we also wanted to, to, uh, to do also is, is, um, is to show you again what happened. Because on that tape, we showed you a map of, of where they're actually from. So we wanted to show you again what just actually happened. Because what we did was uh, we actually forced the map makers to, to update their map of the island of Tonga. So they changed everything and now you can see it better. So uh, you can thank Tonga Island for that. <laughs> Here is another look at what we, at the new map they put out for our, for our, uh, for our, you know, showing where these these two young men's families' background comes from, Even from the island of Tonga. Here it is again, but this with the new map. So this is the island of Tonga. On um, the width of it is on this map here. It's about, um, yeah, 20 miles, 20 miles long. 10 miles wide, so 40 kilometers, 20 kilometers. Yeah, so we go down to Captain Cook's landing site here um, around Alaki, and uh, this uh, Taufa, Ahau, um, Taufa Ahau Road is probably where Captain Cook arrived in 1771, 1774, walked on these streets, I think. Um, that, and like we said before, it, this is before America became uh, America in 1776. So he was here um, walking these streets of Taufa Ahau Road. And um, 
we, we said that these two singers come from here, from this area, within blocks of each other, you know? Um, this is, um, how do you call it? Uh, as you can see, I don't wanna give out any details, but some of the roots uh, come from these, these road right here, you know? Um, and uh, there is a, as you can see, the old map didn't show this, this church here. Now this church was blown by the, uh, by the hurricane, but they're rebuilding it. So that is the new version of, of the map that they are using at the moment, because next to it is a rugby field right here. That's the rugby field, you know? And so, um, like I said, it, they didn't have these. I think the map that they were using has been used for like over, I don't know, more than 25 years. Okay, so this is the new map at the moment. Yeah. So when we look again at the, at the area where, where these two singers are from, but you know, um, this, this area, they have a lot of, um, they're known for their performing arts and also sports. You know, this area, um, at least uh, at the moment, like for example, uh, you know, so the two singers we all know, but, but there are some athletes that a lot of people don't really know. For example, when you say there is a, there is a New Zealander who plays uh, basketball um, for Memphis Grizzly at the moment, Stephen Adams. Stephen Adams, I mean, um, he's only known to come from New Zealand, but when you really look at some as his roots, um, you know, part of it comes from, from this, within these four blocks, you know, so you can see, like, uh, he's a big man. He's two meters 11, you know? So um, he's, I guess you could say, he's six feet 11 inches. I mean, that's how tall he is, yeah. So two, 11, two meters 11 um, centimeters. I mean, amazing. But, but you know, you think because he's, uh, because he's part uh, from New Zealand and uh, you know, from Tonga that it's from his Palangi side. Uh, no, I mean, here is uh, this from the same four blocks. These athletes are also, at the moment, are wrestling in Japan, you know? And here they are, three of them. Um, they're all from the same blocks, you know? That same four blocks we showed you where E.M. Tongi and uh, uh, Philippe Manu and, um, you know, uh, Stephen Adams are from here, they are. Yeah, and um, look, um, I mean, they're all Americans, you know? But uh, roots from those uh, four blocks, you know, and you're looking at, uh, on the left, they're all professional wrestlers in Japan. Um, on the left is um, Tangaloa, and in the middle is there, um, wh where I got the, the photo from, from Tamatonga on Twitter, so go ahead and follow them on Twitter, and also on the right there is um, is Hikuleo, and, and Hikuleo is, is like, um, when you look at him, he, he's tall, he's almost, um, he's over two meters tall, so he's He's six feet nine. I mean, all of these guys come from the same area we were talking about. But anyway, I just thought you guys should know that um, there are actually tall people out there from the islands, and especially in the rugby team. Um, here, I, I, this is why it took so long. We, we made sure we made a, 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 the squad um, for, for the national team uh, that played against uh, Australia. Here they are, the 15 players. Uh, and we put them in the formation they are, so to help you guys uh, learn the game, just like um, <laughs> me and my family. Um, you know, my boys don't know it, so I'm just trying to explain it so they understand it. So we have um, 15 players, uh, they are divided into two groups, uh, the forwards and the backs. And they have special names for all of them, but I'm gonna try to keep this below 20 minutes. So um, a fast explanation, the forwards are the tallest and they're the biggest, you know, and the backs. They are the fastest players, you know. Um, they have uh, they have a lot of talent carrying the ball and plus also kicking the ball. So and they're very fast, and that's the back. Th those are the backs. So um, next time I'll try to uh, make sure I'll explain more, uh, even the game between Australia because they have great highlights for that. And then we'll try to do also the Fiji game and uh, apologize for the late for taking so long, but I'm trying to keep this below 20 minutes. Anyway, everybody, if you're here for the first time, make sure you subscribe and uh, share the content and uh, press like if you like. Until we meet again next time. All right, take care, everyone.